Hello, and welcome to this supplementary video on the abdominal examination. In this examination, we are going to look at the location of the abdominal organs in a 3D space, in order to hopefully aid understanding as why certain organs, such as the kidney, being retroperitoneal, are more difficult to examine, slash blot for, compared to organs located nearer the anterior abdominal wall, such as the liver, or the liver edge, which you are palpating for during the abdominal examination. The initial part of the abdominal examination is looking for tenderness in any of the nine regions of the abdomen. This examination should be done lightly and superficially, beginning in the right iliac fossa, the suprapubic region, the left iliac fossa, the right lumbar region, the epigastric region, and the left lumbar region. The right hypochondrium, the epigastric region, and the, finally the left hypochondrium. If any area of tenderness is found, it should be investigated further with deep palpation using the flat of the hand, carefully and systematically around all areas, going deep, putting pressure on the abdominal contents, assessing for masses, areas of increased pain or tenderness, and other concerning features. The examination of the liver edge is done from the right iliac fossa up to the right hypochondrium. The examination is performed using the right radial edge of your index finger. The patient is asked to breathe in as pressure is applied to the abdomen and breathe out as pressure is relaxed. Continual pressure is applied in a stepwise fashion until the radial edge of the index finger comes into contact with the edge of the liver. Once the liver edge has been established, it is measured using finger breadths below the costal margin. With the majority of the abdominal organs removed, the spleen visible here in the left hypochondrium, can be seen to be particularly small and that it does not descend below the level of the costal margin in a normal individual. For this reason, when palpating the spleen, it is exceptionally important to palpate beginning in the right iliac fossa, as a massively enlarged spleen may appear normal if not examined correctly. Similarly, retroperitoneal are the location of the kidneys, explaining why when trying to blot the kidneys with one hand at the renal angle and the opposing hand coming above the abdomen, these very small, deeply located organs are often impalpable. And as a result, when blotting or attempting to blot the kidney, pressure should be applied to move the splenic flexure away to allow increased ability to blot this retroperitoneal organ. Another normally impalpable organ of the abdomen is the bladder, seen here at its normal size situated beneath the protection of the symphysis pubis. In causes of acute urinary retention, the bladder can extend sufficiently to contain up to two litres of urine within the abdominal cavity, at which point the bladder is easily palpable. Although not quite as clearly demarcated as the lymph nodes of the head and neck, the inguinal lymph nodes have a horizontal group and a vertical group. The horizontal group drains from the abdominal cavity and the buttocks and back, whereas the vertical group drains from the scrotum the penis and the genitalia, and also from the lower limb. A final point for the abdominal examination is the presence of the gallbladder, picked out here in green. Even on an examination of an acutely curly cystitic patient, the gallbladder should remain largely impalpable. Seen here on the posterior of the liver, the gallbladder 
body is largely contained behind the liver, hence why it is impalpable. It should be noted at this point, Courvoisier's law states that the presence of a palpable gallbladder in the presence of painless jaundice is most likely not due to gallstones within this structure, as gallstones would be unlikely to cause such an enlargement of the gallbladder without an associated significant increase in pain.